Okay, so today we're installing OMV4 in a virtual machine, so then we can try and adjust things before we actually change things on our server. This is a good way to learn about OMV uh, without uh, breaking your machine. So let's have some fun. So today I thought I'd like to show you how to install Open Media Vault 4 in VirtualBox. Uh, so first, of course, download VirtualBox. And when you click on that, we'll take you over here. We're going to download the Windows hosts. And then after that, after you do that, I would suggest you also download the extension pack here, because then you can get USB 2 and 3 support. Also, what you'll need for this is to download Open Media Vault, and you can find the ISO here. Click right there. And so I'm just going to assume you know how to do all those things, and let's start. So when you start a new virtual machine, what the first thing you need to do is click on New. And so we're going to call this OB, OMB, Open Media Vault. doesn't recognize that, so you have to change it to Linux. And then Debian 64, click Next. And we're going to give it 2 gigs of memory. And that's good. Nothing to change there. Dynamically allocated. 8 gigabytes. Excellent. So it set it up here. You can see that blue one there. But we actually still need to change a few more settings. And so then we need to click on the orange settings button here. And so general is OK for system. Get rid of the floppy drive. Processors, make it two. Good. So deploy space home. Uh, so now we're into storage. So storage, first we want to add in our uh, Open Media Vault uh, ISO. So how we do that is we click over here. Once after this is blue, we click over here on the circle. And so for you, you're going to have to click there and navigate to your file system here. You can see I have already have tried to do it once, so we're going to click on that. You can see now Open Media Vault is there. Next, uh, we're going to add in some extra hard drives. So here is the hard drive we just added. And we're going to add in a few more. You have to click on the square for this. We create new disk. And same as the other one, we're just going to say OK to everything and then create down here. And we're going to make a RAID array, so we're going to have to make a few of these. So same thing again, next, next. And it says the same name twice. It doesn't, it's not smart, smart enough to figure out that it needs a different name, so you have to change that to 2. Good. And we're going to make one more. We're going to change that to 3. So now we have four disks available for Open Media Vault. So one is going to be the installed disk. That's going to be the OMV one. The other three, we're going to create a virtual RAID array. Okay, now we're going to kick on audio. Don't need audio. Uh, network, this is the important one. We're going to switch that to bridged adapter. So that way it uses the network controller of our computer. Everything else should be OK, so we're going to click OK. And now we're going to click on Start. What we're going to do now is install Open Media Vault, so we're just going to hit Install. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and so we're in America, so we're going to do English. Good. United States, American English. Okay, so we're going to change the name of the server or the host name to uh, something similar to what's on the uh, over on the virtual box. So we put OMV for that, so we'll just change this to OMV. 
and click continue. And we're not going to change anything here. Uh, next, you need to put in a password. So put in a password you're going to remember. Because you're going to need this in a few minutes. OK, so next we're going to set up our storage. And so we're just going to pick the top one. Now it's downloading updates. Okay, and so what you'll notice as we've been going through here, I have uh, sped up some areas where it's just updating. So yours doesn't uh, download and install as quick as this. Uh, just know that uh, that's why, because I've been fast forwarding through certain areas. Okay, so installation is complete. So we're going to hit continue. It's going to shut down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually log in to find our IP address. This is the quick way. So root and then that password that we put in before. Hopefully you wrote it down. Oh, and I guess I was wrong. There we go. And so next what we want to do is find our IP address for this machine. So we're going to pick uh, IP ADDR, and that's going to say our IP address. And if you look down second line from the bottom, it says 192.168.254.18. And so we're going to take that number, and we're going to put that into a web browser, and we're going to log into our machine. Very good. There we go to Open Media Vault. And so when you first log in to Open Media Vault, the username is admin. And the password is Open Media Vault. And click Login. And so the first thing you want to do is change your admin password. And so again, I suggest something you will remember and save and so now you're in open media vault in the server from here uh, the first thing that i would do actually is uh, updates so there's a lot of updates to start with just click check there and then upgrade over here then we'll do all your updates okay when they're all done you just click close and reload and the page will reload. We're back here. So after your updates are installed, one of the first things I would install is Open Media Vault Extras. And here you can see it's ombextras.org. We're going to go straight to the guides. And then you go down here to installation. We're doing OBM4, so we'll click on that to download it. And so it's already downloaded. We're going to go back to Open Media Vault and go to Plugins and Upload. I'm going to browse to our file, Downloads, Extras, click OK, and install that. And once we do that, we're going to check for updates. So after we're done checking, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here and click on OpenVVault, uh, OpenVVaultExtras.org. We're going to install that. And yes, we really want to install that. Good, and it's all done. And now it's going to refresh, and you'll see we'll have an extra area over here. And so if we go over there, uh, we have now OpenVVault Extras, and then we can have other things, Plex, Sync, uh, RAID, Docker, TeamView. So here we're going to click on that. Docker, we're going to edit, enable, save, 
And now if we go back over to plugins, we have a couple extra things. The one thing that I wanted to install right now is this shell in the box. This is going to be very handy if you do anything with Docker. So we're going to click that. Install. And yes. Now we're going to click close and reload. Go back over here to plugins. Oh, it's thinking. And then we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to click in on the Docker GUI and install that. Right underneath that one you can see is VirtualBox. So we could do a virtual install inside of a virtual stall. Uh, what I'm more interested in is just getting Docker's uh, up and working to have just specific programs run rather than whole operating systems. So we're just uh, putting in the Docker, Docker for right now. Okay, so when that's done, you just click close and it's going to refresh again. Okay, so now if you go down here, we have two very important things. So we have that Docker, and then we also have the shell in the box. Let's just click on the shell in the box first. And so we're going to enable that and save. And so now what we can do is actually, uh, after we apply and say yes, so we can get a basically a shell in our uh, server just by clicking web clients. We do that. And here we have to say yes. And there you see OVM login. And now we can log into our OVM server by the command line uh, very easily. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is now we have Docker. And so we're going to actually enable that and save that. And so now we have the Docker GUI installed. So now we can actually add in Dockers and do and uh, adjust those. Dockers are a pretty big subject, so we'll do that sometime later. So this is basically how to install OVM4 into a virtual machine uh, so that you can do lots of different things. And I would actually suggest doing this even if you don't need to, because if you want, if you have a working machine which has OVM on it, it's good to have a, a uh, virtual machine to try things out before you actually implement them on your uh, working machine. So, okay, hopefully you find this helpful, and if you did, uh, please like below.